You're listening to The Parallel Pass, a podcast designed to elevate your mind, body, and spirit so that you can get everything you want out of life. The only question is, are you ready? (laughs) Parallel (laughs) Paths. Welcome back to The Parallel Paths podcast. I'm your co-host, Makita Moore. I'm your other co-host, Blair McClendon. And we have a very special, special guest here today, Mr. Lakeem down here coming in from Austin, Texas. Go ahead and introduce yourself to the listeners, Lakeem. All right. What's up, everybody? I'm Lakeem, uh, the founder and creator of Natural Born Studios uh, from, from Dallas, Texas, originally live here in Austin. And yeah, I'm a visual artist, entrepreneur, illustrator and thought leader, all those good things. (laughs) Sorry, I'm like, (laughs) yeah, (laughs) Lakeem, you wear so many hats. Um, And it's so funny because whenever I think about, I feel like I don't know if this is just a part of being an entrepreneur or if it's just the people within our circle, but we're always doing so much. Like even Mm -hmm. within animation, and Lakeem, I know you take it to so many levels. So you like said artists, but you know, can you go a little bit deeper in all the ways you, all your your platforms for art? I know there's a ton. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I I think of artists, I'm I'm a creative problem solver pretty much, or so, Right now, I'm, I'm traditionally a painter, so I have a background in illustration, doing paintings. Uh, but recently, more recently, it's been more transforming the painting styles and illustrations into digital art, digital forms. You know, thinking about the platforms that we showcase our artwork on, and you know, also the balance of doing it like commercially or doing it for people or helping clients and just having my own creative expression and projects, you know, so yeah, in terms of the art, yeah, publishing, really, I think publishing is something I've been doing lately, or just thinking of artwork in terms of publishing Mm -hmm. and curating things that speaks to the culture. Um, So I think all those things tie into the art that I create and the what I present, how the art, how I present the art to, you know, the world. Yeah. If y'all haven't seen his art, y'all sleeping. Definitely. We're going to put all the links to his, uh, all his forms of art in the show notes. So y'all definitely check out Lakeem's art. I got yeah, you art definitely pieces. Have some good work, bro. Yeah. I've definitely had some, I'm an owner of some of these art pieces. And um, so, yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us, Lakeem. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. Um, as an artist myself, uh, a question I have for you is where do you draw your inspiration from? Or is it just kind of natural imagination or what, whatever's coming to mind? Right. I think the main inspiration comes from, you know, the, the culture. The culture itself is the inspiration, you know, because outside of when I think I start calling myself an artist, I'm just a person who love and appreciate art. Like I admire it and okay. I just happen to have the talent and ability to be able to create it, you know. But before being an artist, I admire, you know, other artists that came before and, and music has a big part of it too, you know, in terms of inspiration wise. So all the things and elements of create creativity that creates the culture, you know, our slang, our yeah. being as black people, like yeah. all those type of things tied to the narrative and purpose behind the art, you know? Yeah, yeah. I can definitely appreciate that. Yeah. Um, I would say that's, that's definitely a source of mine too. Mm-hmm. Uh, for sure. I absolutely love that looking because I, I truly just see so much beauty in our culture on on so many levels and, you know, I attempt to capture it, but, you know, through, you know, taking pictures, Um, but to be able to, to receive it in your mind and then, you know, transmute it and put that on paper and then bring it to life through the digital art that you've been doing. I'm just like, that is, that's a skill to have right now. I feel like that digital art piece and creating media in that way, that's like the, the golden skill to have right now. 
because we have all these right. thought out here, but it's like, who can bring that thought to life? And it's those animators. Yeah, and digital art, the reason I'm getting into digital art is because the new wave of technology. And what I'm learning is, you know, five years ago, even more recent than that, you know, the way we like set up as vendors, we would make paintings, physical paintings and go out, set up, you know, sell our stuff. They still, and people still do those things, but with like Corona and different things going on in physical, in the physical world. And the fact that we use our digital platform so much, I think the technology is naturally swaying towards creating digital art, you know, or for artists who are creating art, you know, the iPad and things make it so easy to transfer your work and your thoughts into the digital world. So it's like, and then there's new markets coming up. Like, I don't know if y'all heard of like the NFTs. I was just about to ask you that. I knew yeah, was on the way. Like, I could tell by how you were talking. I'm like, yeah, he knows about NFTs and stuff. So that's actually something I'm trying to get into. Wait, what is that? What's NFT? Yeah. It's a non-fungible so, token um, via mm-hmm. cryptocurrency. So it's basically a way for you to, to sell your art digitally and limit it to a certain number. Am I explaining that correctly? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I know Banksy, uh, he had, like, an original piece that he put up uh, as an NFT, and I think he put 100 copies, or maybe it was even 10, and Mm -hmm. burned it, burned it live. So it just kind of gives the artist, uh, I guess, even more of a platform to sell more pieces, but still have it a limited number. That's dope. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. It's like it's like a new wave. <laughs> Not a new wave, but you know, like yeah. Most people don't think of digital art as like a one off thing, because it can be copied. Mm-hmm. But they allow you to uh upload your artwork to a blockchain. That's amazing. And the blockchain, yeah. It's it's a lot of it's like nerdy. It's, it goes into like For sure. <laughs> It gets nerdy. I, I try to just give it as high level as possible without making it go over people's head because it is a lot to learn. So mm-hmm. I'm still learning myself, but yeah. And Lakeem, I'm so right. glad you said nerdy because I feel like being a nerd and having knowledge, like that's what's make like that's what is the power right now. Or even just in general, it always has been. But you know, as kids, it was always like, oh, you know, you get picked up for being a nerd. But I'm like, kid, like learn as much as you possibly can it is the ones who have the knowledge who have the power so learn about blockchain learn about whatever it is look at all these books you know behind lakeem learning Mm -hmm. having knowledge the right knowledge um so important i'll be a nerd yeah yeah knowledge i always say because most people do it for money like they trying to figure out how can i make money and because they think that money makes you smart or like once you figure out how to get money, you're smart. But it's really being smart is the thing that makes you money. Mm. Or being able to knowing how to research, gather information, process information, then turn that into something that you want to create, and then turning your creation into like figuring out how you can turn that into money. But it takes that research and that information first to learn how to. to either know what nfts and things are or just know about the culture like we even though we're from the culture we still have to do our research in the culture and the research the past to understand where we want to go and what we want to create as artists you know so the same way you have your your background with the ancient civilization you know i bet it's like background backstories behind those pictures and photos and like the buildings and narratives and it's like you know, once you get into the research, I think that's the thing with this generation. Our generation is so, you know, Instagram, like instant, that we kind of lost the capacity to research and just go information hunting <laughs> a lot of mm-hmm. times. And there's so much information in books. And even bigger than that, it's so much information in the stuff that we already wrote you know, like probably our past journals, our past uh, sketchbooks and things. Like I'm learning 
you know, I buy a lot of books and we read a lot of books, but we've also written a lot as individuals and the writings that we write, you know, we probably solved all the problems in the world in our past writings and things, <laughs> but we just got to go read, reread the stuff that we wrote individually because that's a part of it. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's the big thing. It's funny you say that, and again, this is another synchronicity for me and something coming full circle, but literally, I was just talking about this on Saturday, uh, I found out some very interesting information about my grandfather, and that's what kind of inspired the background for today, because at least on my mom's side, we're native to Florida, so this is where we're from like it wasn't a slave ship that came over from Africa, Africa like we're from here so just finding out a little bit more about him and I know he wrote a lot and I literally just told my cousin I'm like we got to go find some of his old writings and like go through some of this stuff because he had to leave some gems and it kind of even made me feel just more I guess uh solidified that I'm on the right track with three layers of wellness, just leaving behind little gems that the next generations can take. And so I do know too a lot about like our people's background. A lot of stuff wasn't documented. A lot of it was like an oral type of history. And so I know that's one thing as far as, I don't know if you want to call it a generational curse, but that's something that I want to break in that in that chain as far as being able to leave stuff behind. Mm -hmm. And even, I mean, just this podcast, like this is media that we're leaving behind, you know, yeah. our grandchildren, children, when we have access to this. So that's why I feel like it's so important to, you know, if you are um, someone who's seeking to understand yourself in this world, it's, you know, stop putting off, stop waiting, stop letting your, your nine to five get in the way of you creating, you know, this, this documentation for the future generations and Lakeem's art you know that too that's telling a story that's telling that you know about the culture right now so that's history too yeah yeah capture the culture it's so important to capture the culture that was your post the like, other day wasn't it capture the culture yeah 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 I'm making it my my tagline for the year Love it. That's tagline dope. is going to be capture the culture and I don't know, it just, it just, it was an epiphany or a light bulb that kind of summed down from a lot of things. But I watched this Denzel Washington uh, interview video. He was like being interviewed by a lady and she pretty much asked him, you know, why do you, this movie have to have a black director? Why not a white person or somebody else? And he was saying, he, he pretty much responded, uh, it's not about color, it's about culture. And she was like, I'm confused, can you break it down? I don't, I don't understand, like, why not, you know, what, why the, is it a racist thing? But he was like, nah. And he explained a moment and situation where he was like, when you was a little girl and you were getting your hair, like, hot ironed, you know, you know as a young black girl, like, the hot iron hitting your hair and the smell and a pop from the, the, the hot iron and the the sizzle in that moment right yeah. there is culture. You know, those are defining moments of culture that we identify with specifically, you know, and it's like, once he said that, I was like, damn, it just clicked in my head. Like culture is, is really reflective of moments, accumulated moments over time that we just experienced throughout life, especially from childhood, because the crazy thing is we've been our same self, like our same individual since we were five, six, seven years old. Like we, were, we went from kids to young adults to now we're full adults. But it's certain aspects of who we are and our soul, you know, we, our soul never changes. Mm -hmm. And a lot of parts of our soul and thing was captured. I think culture is the environments that shaped us, you know, where we grew up fast our family, you know, whether you had older brothers or you was the youngest or, you know, one parent home or you had both parents, like all those things have effects and aspects on your culture. And the interesting thing about black culture is that it's the most profitable and the most popular in the world. 
but we own the least of it. Well, I wouldn't say we own the least of it, but, you know, in terms of how the world see our culture, opposed to how we see our culture internally from the experience that we grew up in, in the culture, you know, the world figured out the ways, the, I don't want to say the world, industries have figured out ways to capitalize off of mm -hmm. our narratives, our experiences, our culture, you know, but we don't tend to capitalize off of it as much as we should be. So that's why I was like, with the artwork, artworks are just like little time frames and paintings into, that's the cool thing about art because it can be from the dream world, you know, it doesn't have to be a physical thing. Like it's not photography. Like photography literally capture moments in time. <laughs> Like you take a picture of someone, it captures that moment in time. But artwork and paintings, you can do that same thing, but it's also coming from a part of the brain that's tied to the dream world, that's tied to your subconscious mind. Like, you know, we develop the skill, some artists develop the skill to be able to draw realistically and to paint pictures to make them look exactly like an image, you know, but some artists, may see things based off colors or you know certain words put together is art to them you know it's like it comes from a dream realm or a different realm of, of thinking mm -hmm. and you know that's why i think that art is so powerful and important because unlike photography where you're, you're literally capturing moments that's happened in time like art you're capturing moments from your brain <laughs> and just bringing it to life Mm. And you know, and that's throughout all mediums like dance, writing, poetry. Mm. You know, it's not just visual art; it's just art in general. That's what, so. I, that makes me. I'm about to start crying because you're so poetic in the way you explain things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> am I? <You> <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah. So so that to me just seems like you're receiving information, receiving you know basically spirit so speaking of like just art being this spiritual practice do you see it as that do you see it as a spiritual practice for you yeah I think art is definitely it's a spiritual journey <laughs> you know it's one of those things it's almost like writing in your notebook uh once it's written once it's out of your brain and onto a sheet of paper it's almost like you've written a spell or you manifest it, you know, you turn something from imagination to tangible, you know, and I think that's a spiritual thing within itself, almost like being an alchemist mm -hmm. and things like that. Like, and I think that shows the test of our success is how well we can transfer ideas and things that's images in our minds to tangible um, art pieces you know, like tangible things. So that's a spiritual journey because not every, it's spiritual because not every animal or a mammal person can do that. Well, humans can do it. That's why we're separate from animals and things like, you know, you can't, or well, maybe they can. Like I've, I've seen videos of elephants do paintings and stuff, <laughs> but I think humans have a certain spiritual advantage that we explore, we discover. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it comes through through the art and the language. Man. Yeah, that is deep. <laughs> <laughs> early morning, yeah. early morning going deep. <laughs> what are your, sure. Um, sure. so what do you, what are your practices for maintaining your spirituality? Like to keep in that open creative flow going, what do you practice? Yeah, that's a good question. I think, shoot, I just practice being human. <laughs> I try to practice being a productive human. Like, I think on the same token, I can be, be very scattered mind, like scattered brain sometimes in a sense that, and I think this came over time for me becoming an entrepreneur and not having like set schedules uh like to clock in at nine o'clock get off you know mm -hmm. i've 
since I freed myself from like set schedules, um, the thing that I've been learning that I have to discipline myself in is giving myself time, like creating space and time to create. And because like now, since I've made that dedication to be my own entrepreneur, I'm an artist. I'm like balancing both, you know, sometimes it's this much art and this much entrepreneurship, then it's this much entrepreneurship and I make this much art. Mm -hmm. But, you know, on social media and things like that, people see that, oh, he's posting, he must be doing art every day. Like, dang, he's a machine. He's never stopping. But it's really just, I became like more of a curator of the work that I'm putting out. And I think that's became a realization is that I have to see myself from different lenses. And sometimes like, you know, we are our artist self, meaning like, all right, I'm the artist. I'm thinking about what I want to create and the concepts, what I'm trying to, what message I'm trying to get out. Then we have to put ourselves in like the curated position of like, um, what bodies and series of works are, how are these images going to go well together? What am I trying to stay in a body of work? And then sometimes you got to put yourself in the viewer's seat or perspective of like, this is how people are perceiving what I'm saying. You know, even though I'm trying to say this with these messages in my art and visual art, this is how people are perceiving it. This is how people are perceiving my brand. AC Natural Born is like, oh, he's an animation studio that's coming up or dang, he the dopest tattoo artist I've seen. Like, since I play so many roles, people perceive me in different ways. So it's like, I have to go between those three areas of being a curator and showing people what I want to do, how I'm doing it, but actually be the artist and produce it. So I forgot what the question was, but that was, that's what it led. <laughs> it's just well, I was going to say, we learned a lot of hats as an entrepreneur. Um, kind of what led you to that moment that you knew you were like, all right, I need to step out on my own and kind of be willing to take on those mini hats. Yeah, man, I think it was like specific things in life that made me realize, all right, I need to leave this job and I need to be doing this. One, I was working at a manufacturing company here in Austin um it was called well i don't want to say the name it was a fine arts manufacturing company and pretty much every day 5 a.m to 6 p.m like it'll be nighttime when we're waking up and it'll be nighttime when i'm leaving work and we were just it was an art manufacturing company so it was cool like we was putting prints and stuff into frames rolling up posters shipping out boxes and just 12 hour days like in like four four days a week type deal and I was working there and I was like, dang, it was cool first few months. Then later on, the I don't know, it just clicked in my mind, like, man, this is literally indoor slavery. <laughs> if you think about it, and I just started, you know, really paying attention to the environment, the work environment and how, you know, the bosses will walk by and like literally not say anything. And it's it's it become to positions, the positions that you have in like major companies. And you know. I was just put things into context and realized like, all right, I'm a floor worker. There's people in the upper offices and then you got the bosses who own the whole thing. And, you know, I just had to make a decision. It was like, it got to like December, the end of the year. And I put in a two weeks notice because prior to that, I have always been thinking of like being a full-time artist. Like, dang, can I do it? What if I can't make rent? And what if I can't do this? But it just came to that decision where do I want to continue like me studying all this black culture, studying all this stuff and the pride and having power as black people. I was like, am I going to continue to work as a slave in this uh, <laughs> in this warehouse, but still represent, want to represent that? So it just came to a point where I was like, I got to just take control and not be scared and understand that, you know, I can I can be an artist, you know, or I can not necessarily be an artist, but I can be into the field of art and be my own boss and control things. 
So the, it was like, go, go ahead. ahead. My bad. No, I was just saying, yeah, that was, that was the turning point. It was just like an epiphany and I was like, I just got to make a move. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I was just going to say, do you feel like, uh, once you made the move, did your spirituality kind of take a, a jump to the next level or were you kind of having to lean on it a little bit more than what you were used to? Yeah, most definitely. Because what happened was the fear of the unknown. <laughs> I think that's spirituality, if you want to sum it up. It's like if you tie spirituality to God, we don't know God, but we got so much faith in God. Well, I don't want to say we don't know God because certain people know God in different ways. But physically, tangibly, you know, God is within us, God is everywhere, you know. So spiritually taking on that journey i think god represents unknown to like tie it together and once i left the job it came to the point was like ah shit i don't know it was an excitement because of the freedom of time like i had the time to i ain't have to wake up at 6 a.m and go clock in because that once you get into those routines your mind is just programmed so that freedom was like being baptized almost or something. I don't know. But it's liberating. I, became, huh? I said it's yeah. liberating. Yeah, to know that, dang, I got these same 12 hours to work for myself or to put some together or to figure out a plan. You know, and I'm thinking of the early days when I first didn't go back, didn't clock in. Like the day after I chose not to clock in, I was thinking like, damn, all right, now I did it. Now... Yep heaviest head that wears the crown you know like now you actually got to make moves but one thing just led to another like I had a mural project lined up the week after so I was like boom this is gonna be rent for the month boom like you know and then I got I guess the flow started happening 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 naturally like people started contacting me um you know once you lose something to d- pursue what you want to do, your mind is going to click into that uh, mode of figuring out problems. It's just getting over that initial fear of quitting was the spiritual part because we feel that we feel sometimes we feel attached to structure and attached to the jobs and the things that are consistent. But now, now it's just on me to create my consistency and repeat the narratives and things that I want to manifest and create as an artist and tie with the purpose. Mm. So, yeah. Hey, Parallel Podcast listeners. If you're looking to learn more about building a strong mindset and deepening your meditation practice, join Makita every Tuesday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time live on Instagram for Makita's meditation and mindset tips. You can also schedule a free consult by visiting the link in her Instagram bio at Makita Smiles. And for all things health and wellness, check out Blair's site, threelayerswellness.com for products, services, and resources. And if you're looking to establish or enhance your business online presence, don't forget to check out the bonafideagency.com for assistance with websites, logos, graphic designs, and more. You can find all of this information in the show notes as well. So how long has it been since then? Since you left? Uh, it was 2018, so three years. Oh, so you're still still fresh in the game. <laughs> but still a yeah, vet in yeah. the game. Three years is a fresh long time in entrepreneurship, man. Fresh right. What were some yeah, of those lessons good. that, what have been some of the major lessons you've learned as far as balancing an artist as also an entrepreneur? I think it's a balance of how people see you. It's such a, it's such a, Sometimes it's such a contradictory <laughs> contradiction because being an artist is a self-discovery. Being an entrepreneur is about service and problem solving for other people. Mm-hmm. So it's like, artists, what do I want to create for myself? Why am I making these narratives? Entrepreneur, what problems do the industry have? Like, how can I solve a problem being an artist? How can I... Uh, 
tie what I'm doing so it can be so they they want to pay for this you know things like that and I'm still you know three years in I'm still figuring out like uh and this ties down to like how do I how do you set a price for your services like if a person because a lot of times I'm helping other people you know I was like natural born studios consider us your creative department of uh, your creative department that's like my entrepreneur mindset like i understand that entrepreneurship has is more about what problems do people have how can you set yourself in a place to be the solution for those problems so boom like slick fit like aranisha hit me up not too long ago and she was looking for some fashion illustrations for some uh garments that her uh that she was doing for a release so me an entrepreneur mindset is like all right how can i create designs that capture the vision that she was trying to create so now it becomes i'm still an artist but art becomes my tool and skill instead of like ah oh, this is my freedom of expression like now i'm using the art as a tool and a skill to help other people you know with their whether it's promotions or video projects you know it just it, it's a range of things with helping people but that was the shift that was the understanding was that all right if i'm going to grow if i'm going to be an artist and an entrepreneur i got to use my artwork to serve and help people and just like you know provide you know that's how i make money off of it <laughs> you know and so it's it's a constant it's a constant reshaping and restructuring boundaries between those two because sometimes I don't want to take on people's projects or you know maybe their stuff they trying to get created created is not within the culture or the land that I'm trying to talk about and express so you know self part is I'm still doing this for the culture like as an artist you know I still wanted to create artwork for the culture so not everybody's style and everybody contacting you because sometimes people put you into boxes like oh he's an artist maybe he can do our logo he's an artist maybe he can paint you know like they see you as an artist and that's just vague <laughs> so when you start defining the purpose of your art um i think we develop i think that's the thing develop is the word we're constantly developing our skill and our talent in the field that we're growing in. And development is a thing that's never ending. So it's, it's like- Constant evolution for sure. Yeah, like development aspects. And it's crucial for us to keep development developing, especially if we want to become the millionaires, get to the next level. You know, they say good is the enemy of great. <laughs> mm. Good is the enemy of great. That's facts. Definitely all relatable, though, man. Uh, that's why I said, even though three years may seem like a short time to some, that's a long time in entrepreneurship world because it's so much time that you're spending on your business. And like you said, it's, it's kind of like that 80-20 rule, like 80% of your efforts or 80% of like basically your income would be from 20% of your efforts and, and that mm -hmm. vice versa thing. But trying to have the balance of when to create when to market when to work on this piece when to work on that piece is this working and it's constant evaluation of what's working what's not working or how you can evolve this piece or how you can make this small change here and maybe see some fruits on this end so just relating to you in that aspect like that's kind of even what we just did with our rebranding with uh bona fide and it was basically exactly what you said. It's like, how can I use what I'm doing from a digital art perspective and turn it into a service? And it's stuff I had already been doing anyway. So it's like, okay, let me compile my portfolio, turn this into branding and design. So yeah, like you said, just day by day, but it's, it's a marathon. It's, it's definitely something that's, it's a, it's a longevity game. It's, it's not an instant gratification. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the compound effect. <laughs> Fact. Yeah. yeah. And plus, as you, I feel like one of the most valuable things is that as you dive more into who you are, your creative, your true expressions, 
that'll align you with other people who are on that same path. So you'll find people who feed your spirit because you're feeding your spirit first and foremost, you know, and that's how, you know, me and Lakeem, we connected through, you know, social media and me and Blair too, basically through social media, because we were all putting out things that are, are forms of creation that caught the eye of one another. And that's how we link. Mm-hmm. True. Never even thought about it like that, but yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Your vibe attracts your tribe, right? Yeah. That's what they say. That's dope. <laughs> The parallel podcast. I'm interested in how you guys came up with parallel paths <laughs> podcast. I know it's like off topic, but I think that's a dope name. Like, what does the parallel paths represent? <laughs> well, I mean, kind of like even just what you shared. Um, it's kind of a parallel path with me and entrepreneurship. Like, I think we all share different parallel paths. That's what kind of make us similar. Um, and Makita's word is the hero's journey or phrase mm-hmm. I should say, but like everybody uh, goes through these struggles and have these challenges to overcome. And so at least that's my definition for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's dope. <laughs> no, cause, yeah. But Kim, is there any advice you would give to young artists who are thinking about going on their own, taking on their art full time. Is there any advice you would want to give them? Yeah, my advice to young artists is I think about my nephew and I'm thinking of advice because <laughs> he's a freshman in high school. It's like 14, 15 going on 16 and he's at that phase where He's looking into career paths and he's an artist. Mm -hmm. So my advice would be organize, figure out ways to organize your mind uh, in terms of um, sometimes you got to separate. If you want to create art for yourself, boom, that's that's good. That's cool. Yeah, it's one thing to create art for yourself. If you want to create art for the world, Sometimes you got to step back and see yourself, how the world see you. Or you can create the narrative, you can create the art, you can create images of how you want the world to see you. So it's like having that self-reflection of what do you really want to say with your art? And uh, how do you put that into, uh, in words? How do you put that into words and take it from an idea to tangible concepts and thoughts and uh, tangible ideas and paintings and uh, pieces, you know? And then, yeah, that was, that would be my advice (laughs) coming from my mind. And then also continue to develop, you know, I think art is one of those thousand hour things. So development is probably the most important thing. Meaning, um, always be always practice continue practice like you know that's the first thing you should do every day that's something that you art should be something that you don't mind doing every day because you're fat it's fun and it's, you're passionate about it so the development part is how you get the skills how you get the talents to where people want to uh follow your path and follow your journey just because how dedicated you are so you know, definitely create more art <laughs> in simplest terms. Create more, develop your mind, and yeah, <laughs> those Any lessons on the business tips. side of it? Any lessons or, or big mistakes you made on the business side, the entrepreneurship side of art? Definitely. Business side, I'll do the Jay-Z approach. Yeah, set your price and live your life. <laughs> like Jay Z said, set your price and live your life, my nigga. But pretty much, you have to figure out your value. Since art, like NFT stands for non fungible token, art is non fungible, meaning if you buy a canvas, a canvas, a blank canvas is probably like $5. Once you paint your picture on there, you could be painting a million dollar picture. So you've turned a a tangible object into an infungible token or object. 
that you have to set the value to. So when it comes to your art, you got to see it as you got to understand that this is my intellectual property. Like I own it. I created it. I own it. It's a product. And that's when you, once you understand that what you're creating is a product, that's when you get into the mindset of like, how do I set prices for myself? How to, how do I take this thing that to me, you know, you, how do you give value in numbers, like specific numbers to the things that you're producing? Then from there, learn how to sell your story instead of selling the artwork. That's, that'll be the next advice is learn how to sell the story behind your art, the mission and the reason behind your art. Because the goal, one, the goal is always to make money. It sound, it sound bad, but <laughs> underground, under texting, you should set your goals to make money because that can show you the byproduct product of how you did it. But your purpose is always to either provide a solution or to give or to make an impact or to have a deeper um, deeper impact for your art. You know, that's that would be my advice. Your purpose should always be, what's the concept behind my art? What am I trying to say? What impact am I trying to make? But you should make your goal like a, like a tangible, more logical. Like my goal is to sell 10 prints at uh, $50. And I'm, I'm only making these addition of 10, and it's the original painting for it's going to be five thousand dollars because i put 20 hours into it i had to do this amount of research to think about the concepts and i did this and and it's one of one so the original is going to be more once i make my prints my prints are going to be valued at this number and then you know set your prices and fish in the market you know see how people respond to it see if what you're creating is something that the people want to see or is it aligned with certain trends that's going on that makes this piece more popular than another piece that you know like so that's the that's the business side of the advice is and then also give yourself an entity to work from like that's why i created natural born studios and so it's almost like I work for Natural Born Studios, even though I am Natural Born Studios. But I'm Lakeem Ali. I'm Lakeem Wilson. I work for Natural Born Studios. You know, so you got to put yourself in a position of, like, if Natural Born Studios was that production company or that, uh, yeah, that production company that I was working for, you know, how would I be as a, as a, um, as a worker and employee for my own brand? You know, so you got to separate yourself from the entity that you're creating. I love that. Because I like that that's definitely like yeah. a genius idea where it's basically you're going to have all of your pools feeding each other. You know, these are all entities that you've created, but they're all feeding each other because they're all dependent on each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like Nipsey, vertically integrated. Be vertically Facts. integrated. <laughs> what, what, do you, and what do you mean by that is... Like, boom, if I'm going to be an animator, or let's say I want to be an illustrator, I'm an illustrator, the vertically integrated way is, all right, if I'm an illustrator, I might as well do publishing too, because after a person come get illustrations from me, they're going to want to publish them in their books. So I'm going to do publishing too. And after I do publishing, I might as well get into distribution or start a distribution company because they're going to want to get their books to the masses and such and such. So it's like, seeing how the thing you do, the thing you got a talent for, your skill, how can you tie other industries and things with that to continue in, in, a, in a way that everything can be controlled in your favor? Like you pretty much cutting out middlemans, cut out as many middlemans as you can, but never forget to still learn how to delegate tasks too and have a team and maybe your team are those people in those vertic vertically integrated industries that can do things in those fields better than you can. But you, you, what you do mesh so well with it that y'all are better off together. You know, y'all, it's like a win-win situation when you're able to provide the art for people who's, for the words, for people who got the words that can do words better than you can, but your art speaks to the words so well 
and now y'all found a, a company or a publishing or something that, you know, so it's like just connecting dots of industries and, and talents. Yeah. He dropping gems, people. He's dropping gems. <laughs> oh, hey, one thing one. too before we let you go, all the books in the background give us maybe two or three of your favorite books, and then one recommended read for the people right now. Ooh, dang, this is a good one. Well, I'm gonna do a shameless plug first. <laughs> hey, <laughs> no, nah, that's dope. I released, uh, I released my book. You know, I was saying, like I was saying, starting a publishing company. I started uh, at Natural Born Creative Publishing, and pretty much this is the one of the first hardcover books I made. It's called Hidden America, and it's just a, a like a biography and like almost a collection of my top fifty paintings from like the past decade. Dang, that's dope. So I get that from my dad. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to get that. <laughs> yeah. So it's on my it's on my site, LakeenWilson.com or Natural Born Store. Uh, but this was a project I took on um, as a like as a publishing company, seeing how to arrange and go through the full process. So this is a recommendation, and it's a lot of things. It's a lot of gems in here too. You know um, how I got started as an artist, how my work reflects the culture and things. So it's a, it's almost like autobiography and things. So. Yeah. That's one book. I like that. I remember when you were talking about that idea. I remember when you at first told me, you were like, I need to find a way to kind of put all these together. And I think that was yeah. like early quarantine, something. And you did it that yep. way. <laughs> Definitely. That's hard. It's crazy. Like the weekend after y'all came, um, I had my friends come over and start taking pictures of all the paintings and stuff. So it was around wow. that time when I started the book or right around that time we all came to Texas. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then let's see, other books. Man, this is a good one. I just picked this one up. It's called Your Next Five Moves. Uh, Master the Art of Business Strategy. Uh, this is a good one because it it is for entrepreneurs and it teaches you how to think ahead like how to plot your moves and think ahead and seeing life as a chess game. Like this is a good one, your next five moves. And then, uh, shoot, dang man, there's so many to choose from. Am I doing this for artists or just for entrepreneurs? For anybody, just, just what you would recommend. So it could be something spiritual, it could be business. Uh, Got you. Name it. All right, so this was the business tip, boom. Your next five moves. This one is for the culture hey. and for black people and to put things into perspective on us as black people, what direction we need to be going in to empower ourselves. Powernomics by Dr. Clark Anderson. I think college students, black college students should be reading this. It's the national plan to empower black America. Definitely check this out. Even if you don't want to get the book, just type in Dr. Claude Anderson Powernomics because the way he talked about it, he's so passionate in the way he talked and explained it that you might probably learn more from Dr. Claude Anderson speaking and it just, he gives context to it. But Powernomics okay. is definitely a good one. And then for, for more of the art side of things, Dang. Shoot. The brain gap. The brain gap is pretty good. The brain gap is by Marty Neumeyer. The brain gap. This is for people who are starting brands, entrepreneurs, no matter what industry you're in. If you're starting a brand and you're thinking about like, you know, identifying how you how to find your identity as a brand and which messages you're trying to put out that aligns with industries that you can get. Like this is a good book. As you can see, I didn't took notes and written all in it. Like, you know, books are good when you like written on every page. Like they, he he I think he do real strategic approaches to uh showing people how to set up their brands and how to separate this, you know, distinguish yourself from the masses and stuff. 
And yeah, those are some top books. Uh, the Book of Words That Sell. I would recommend this because for people who are into copywriting, like what's, what I start realizing is that on the digital world and the digital platforms, everything is reading and looking at images at the end of the day <laughs> and emotions, like how we respond emotionally, you know, but everything is either a video, a picture, and then it's words. The words is very powerful, like how we write our description, our copyrights, even all the way down to how we send emails, the words that we put on our websites, like it's always an opportunity to like use, be decisive with the words that you use. So this is a good one. Uh, the book of words that sell, it's just like a whole, it's just an archive and encyclopedia of like words you can choose from when you're, you know, writing your descriptions in your bio or setting up an email or something. So that's a good one. So yeah, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Don't appreciate those. Yes, that was a powerful list. So we appreciate it for sure. I know our listeners will. And we'll be sure to put, I'll make sure I put all the titles in the show notes too for everybody who didn't catch them. Definitely. Awesome. Yeah. Sure. Well, Akeem, it has been an absolute pleasure having you on the Parallel Paths podcast. We appreciate all the knowledge you shared. Um, and definitely the art that you're producing for capturing the culture in the way that you are and being bold enough to take that step out on faith and pursue entrepreneurship, you know, pursue your art full time. You know, the culture definitely appreciates it so much. For nah, sure. Keep going, my brother. Most definitely. Thank y'all for the platform, Parallel Podcast. You know, when this mug gets to the million views and they're the whole world watching it, I'm going to be like, dang, I'm glad I got on to that episode, you know, <laughs> drop, being able to drop any type of advice and game and gems that I could, you know, so mm. I'm looking forward to seeing this grow and I love what y'all are doing too, for sure. Yes. Thank you, brother. Appreciate that. Well, definitely yeah. tell the people all the ways they can connect with you, find you, find your products. Got you. So yeah, uh, my Instagrams, Lakeem.Ali at Lakeem.Ali7 and also Natural Born Studios, Natural Born Network. Uh, my website is LakeemWilson.com and if you want to buy and shop for my products, you can go to NaturalBornStore.com. So yeah, and that's, that's me in a nutshell. Or you can just Google, Google my name, Lakeem Wilson. I got a unique name where I pop up. So that's cool. <laughs> awesome. Man, there's so many more questions I wish I could have asked you during this time. So maybe we have to do an episode two. Maybe we have to come back again and we can talk yeah. more about Beam and what all that means and every, all the other things that you have in the book. Oh, uh, yeah, Beams. <laughs> yeah, for sure. We can dive into those for sure. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. That's okay. All right, everyone. Peace, love, and light. Until next time, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to the Parallel Pass podcast. <laughs> peace, peace. Peace out. <laughs>